Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL M5 which is all about the triangle inequality theorem. So what I've done is I went to Google and I just pulled up a little uh, image here of the triangle inequality theorem. Uh, like I say to all of my students, use your resources. The internet is a wonderful resource and has a bunch of formulas and theorems on it if you need them for reference. So the triangle inequality theorem here it's very simple. It just states that when you add any two of the sides of a triangle together, so A and B or A and C or B and C, uh, it has to add up to something bigger than the third side. So over here, we have three little inequality expressions uh, to indicate this. That's just saying the length of side A plus the length of side B has to be greater when you combine them than side C and then it just repeats it for A and C and B and C. So when you add two sides together, the sum of those two angles have to be larger than your third angle. It doesn't matter if you do an A and B or A and C or B and C, just any two sides have to add up to a number larger than your third side, okay? So in that spirit, we'll go back to IXL, and there are a few waves of problems here. First wave uh, are problems like this. They just say, hey, a triangle has these three sides. Is it possible? Can it exist? Because all triangles follow this law right here, this theorem. And um, anything that does not follow it cannot, it's a triangle that cannot exist. Okay, it just doesn't make any sense mathematically. So right here we have these sides uh, with lengths one, two, and four. Well, we have the smallest sides. I would recommend just choosing the smallest sides and we go one plus two uh, is three. So is this a triangle? No, because remember, uh, when you add up any two sides of a triangle, and we're gonna take these smallest sides, they have to add up to a number larger than the third side. So uh, if in order for this to be a triangle, uh, the third side would have to be like two, right? One plus two is three, four is higher than three, so it can't be a triangle. Okay. Can you have sides of a triangle that have lengths one, two, and six? Uh, same problem as last time. One plus two, because of the, these are the two smallest sides. One plus two is three. Three is still smaller than six, which is our uh, third side, so that cannot be a triangle. Uh, okay, same problem here. Let me get to one that actually is a triangle. Okay, um, 36, 14, and six. Still not a triangle because six plus 14 is less than 36. Okay, this the two smaller sides are eight and 17. Uh, so eight plus 17 is 25, so 25 equals 25. Is that a triangle? Still no, because the, uh, the sum of these two numbers has to be larger than the third side. It cannot be equal to, so it has to be at least 26 because our third side is 25. Okay, so as you get higher up, they start to give you um, decimals, okay, numbers with decimals. I'm going to go back and see if I can pull one that is actually true. These are all equal. Not good. Not good. Okay. Let me solve this one real quick. No. There we go. Finally. Okay, so we have a uh, triangle with three sides. We have 20, 5, and 21. So when we add the smaller sides together, we have 20 plus 5. That's going to be 25. 25 is going to be larger than 21. So when we add up the two short sides, they add up to a number larger than the uh, length of the third side. So that is definitely going to be a triangle. Okay, finally found one. Okay, uh, here we have 7.4, 7.5, and 0 0.9. Is that a triangle? Well, when we add up our two smallest sides, which are 7.4 and 0 0.9, that is going to equal 8.3, which is larger than our third side, our longest side here of 7.5. So that is indeed going to be a triangle. Okay, so now I'm going to skip a level. Skip a level again. Okay, so we come to our second tier of problems. And what they do here is they give you the, uh, they give you two sides of a triangle, so 19 and 4 here, and they ask you to find the third side uh, and specifically what is the largest possible whole number length 
for that third side. And these problems are going to switch between finding the largest possible uh, uh, length and the smallest possible length. So when we're trying to find the largest possible length, all we're going to do is we are going to make our small leg A and our large leg B, and we're going to add them together. So 4 plus 19, and that is going to equal 23. Okay, that means our um, our our third leg has to be right under this number, right? So let's say it's 22. This is going to be bigger than 23. Because, and remember, these two sides have to add up to a number that is larger than the third side here, right? And so the largest possible number that it can be is going to be 22. Because if it is 23, it's going to be equal, which doesn't make sense. Uh, if it's 24, then 24 is larger than our, um, our left side of the equation here, 9 plus 14, or I'm sorry, 19 plus 4. And so that can't exist either, and then so on and so on. So 22 is the largest possible value where this, uh, this triangle actually makes sense. Because again, 4 plus 19 is 23, and 23 is larger than 22. Okay? So our answer is going to be 22. We'll go back here. Okay. Next. Uh, now we have a question here. We have 4 and 13, and it's asking for the smallest possible answer. Okay. So uh, last time we marked uh, 4a and 13b. What we're going to do for the finding the smallest possible whole number is we're going to mark the smallest one a and the larger one c. And we're going to come up with an inequality uh, that way. So we're going to do 4 plus, we'll do x as our missing third side, and that is going to equal 13. So 4 plus x equals 13. What's x have to be? Uh, that is going to be uh, 9, like that. And that, uh, we cannot make it 9, right? Because it has to be the smallest possible number where it actually makes sense. 4 plus 9 is 13. We can't have the left side, the uh, sum of the two angles over here, or the sides over here, equal this. They have to be larger. And so, uh, whereas if we are trying to find the largest possible value, we go down one. For the smallest possible value, we're going to go up one. So really, it needs to be at least 10. Okay? So 10. Because again, if we plug 10 in for x, 10 plus 4 is going to be 14, which is higher than 13, and that's totally legal. If we do 9, 4 plus 9 is 13. That doesn't make sense. Um, for a triangle, we cannot have them equal each other. And if we go the other way, if we plug it in 8, 4 plus 8 is 12, which is under our third side length, which doesn't make sense. So it has to be at least 10. That's the smallest possible number we can fit in there for it to be worked. Now, you can do 11, 12, 13, 14. That's going to work as well, right? Um, but we want the smallest possible number. So we're going to do 10 there. Great. Okay, so I'm going to skip. We're going to get to the end here. Okay. Um, and so this is the last tier of problems. And what you're going to see is they give you a triangle again with only two of the lengths defined. And they say they basically want you to do what you just did except you're going to write it in the inequality form like this. So a range of values between this and this right here. So all you're going to do is you're going to set up um, two uh, inequalities. Um, when we were trying to find the largest one, we did A and B. When we were trying to find the smallest possible number, we did A and C. So we're just going to set up both of those inequalities uh, just like the last couple problems. So we're going to do 3... Uh, plus 15, which has to be greater than, uh, we'll say, I guess, x for this. Okay. And that's just going to be 18x. And then we'll set up our other one. So we'll do 3 plus x uh, has to be larger 
than 15. So that just means x has to be larger than 12. Okay, so our range is going to be between uh, 12 and 18. And so uh, what you can do to make this a little bit more clear, you can flip these around, right? You can go 12 is less than x. Okay, this is these two are saying the same thing. I just kind of put everything backwards to put it into perspective. So really you have 12 is less than x. And then over here, this one is saying 18 is going to be more than x. So I'll do the same reverse thing over here. We'll just do x is less than 18. Okay. Again, these are saying the same thing. I'm just rewriting them so they make more sense to what the answer is going to look like for IXL. So we have 12 is less than x, and then of course x is going to be less than 18. So this is going to be the answer. This is the answer they were looking for. So we have 12, which is less than x, which is less than 18. So there we go. Okay, that's all there is to it. Study hard, stay safe, and see you on the next IXL tutorial. Goodbye.